Well, when I graduated, I had hoped and planned that I would be a, a, a Latin teacher. I wanted to go to college. And I, I did have a, a scholarship from uh, Baldwin Wallace, but it w did not include uh, room and board, and my family could not afford to give me any help. So instead, I went to a, a business college in, in, uh, in Cleveland to, so I could be, do secretarial work. And so I went to work for a, 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 a railroad company for several years until I was, uh, had, had my, my, my family. But, but being a secretary, I worked out very well lately because uh, in 1968, uh, Lloyd Narragon, who was the superintendent of, of Buckeye at that time, needed a secretary, and he hired me, which led to me being here working at, at Buckeye for 23 years. So <laughs> it all worked out. <laughs> there, of course, are a lot, a lot of them. One, one, of, one of them is that uh, when I, I went to school, that, that, that all, we only had five, five teachers, so five teachers, and that all of them had to teach more than one subject. And our superintendent also taught, taught school. He taught uh, math and he taught social studies. And, uh, and also the, uh, the, the war was going on at, at that time, uh, the Second, Second World War. And our, our, our science teachers were, all, were always men. They, they taught four years of science. And they were also the coaches for, the, for all, all the uh, uh, athletics. And during my senior year, when I, when I was taking physics, uh, we, we lost two, 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 two men that, that year. So I, we ended up, that our, we had, three teachers and which was not easy for them and it wasn't easy for us but everyone survived and we had a good, good time through it all but well, we, for, for girls we had the, uh, what they called the girl, girl reserves and a, and a girl athletic association and at that time they were mostly again because of the war they connected with uh, raising money for, 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 for different things. But, but really, for our activities were, were the activities of the, of the school. At that time, uh, our class had plays all four, all four years. Or ordinarily, it was only the juniors and seniors who had plays. But, but we had decided we wanted to have a play every year, and then we used the money from that uh, when we had our junior senior banquet, instead of having it at school, as it usually were, we took them into Cleveland to Stouffer's in Cleveland, and then to and then to the uh, a m movie afterwards. So, <laughs> we 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 never heard of a dress code. <laughs> Everyone just dressed. As, as, as they would, obviously didn't, they didn't wear work clothes and they didn't wear uh, Sunday clothes, but everyone had their, their home clothes and their school clothes and their, and their dress clothes. But, but there, there was no dress code. There were 20 in our graduating class. To, to begin with, we got together with, with picnics and so forth. And then as time went on, there, the, the Alumni Association had a, uh, a, a get-together at, at, the, at the old Liverpool High School. And that was very, very well attended. And, and of course, we would sit together in, in classes at that time. And uh, that was discontinued about uh, five years ago because everybody was getting old. <laughs> there were no, no, no young ones anymore. But uh, just this last Monday, I talked to, to, to one of those who was left, or are, are, are four of us left, so three, three, three men and, and myself. And, and, and two of us live in Valley City, and one in, in Brook Park, and the other one in Florida, so. <laughs> Today I just say, I say 
you, you, you have so many advantages <laughs> that we would never have thought of, but have your minds open to you willing to take, a day, take advantage of all, all of those things that are offered to you. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's changed a lot. I, I have no idea what the, what the technology is exactly today. But when the, the year I left, and it would be 90, 91, we, were, we start, first started uh, having the attendance and the report cards done uh, you know, on, on computer. Before that, I mean, the teachers marked every report card of every, every student, and, that, and it was uh, started to change that year. And I know I, I had to go out for a, a, a computer course because I, I knew nothing about it at all. And I was glad I wasn't there because I really didn't like it. <laughs> I was used to doing all of it myself, so. graduated from Buckeye in 1959. I went to college for, well, I stayed for two years in engineering. I did have a scholarship, and I decided after two years I knew more than they did, so I left school in 1961. In 1963, I got married, and uh, I had my first son in 1964, and in that time I was working um, with an engineering company in Rocky River and part of my job was uh, to go out on the field and work installing furnaces and steel mills so I traveled uh, in Canada and uh, part of the United States. Uh, the day after graduation I started work in downtown Cleveland at Prudential Mortgage Loan Office. I rode the Greyhound bus, took probably an hour because we went down Route 42 uh, I-71 wasn't built yet. So I stayed there for ten and a half years and then I chose to be a stay-at-home mom and raise our three kids. There really wasn't much of a dress code. It was, you were pretty much on your own to dress neat and come to school dressed neatly. The boys generally wore shirts, button shirts or pullover shirts, sweaters, uh, dress slacks or uh, Levi's and leather shoes or I should say at that time there was a popular shoe called Bucks. They were a brushed leather, they were white or tan so you wore white shoes or tan, that was big style. And uh, the girls all wore skirts. I, I don't remember that that was a requirement but they didn't wear slacks. They wore blouses, sweaters, and skirts, and some of the skirts, I, I have no idea, young girls today would never wear them. They wouldn't be caught dead in them. They called them poodle skirts. I don't really think we had a dress code. Um, girls all wore skirts to school. I, we might have been able to wear jeans on football days. I can't remember that, but I don't think there was a dress code. If I had to go back to high school knowing what I know now, I don't think I'd change anything. I, uh, I had a really good time in high school. Uh, I participated in a lot of activities. I played sports. I played uh, four years of basketball and football, played a little bit of baseball and ran track. And academically, I don't know that I'd change a thing. Uh, I did. I did very well in high school and uh, I thought it was a good experience for me to learn and know what I had to know to go on with my life. So I don't know that I would have changed anything. I don't, uh, it's really hard for me to say that anything has changed. Uh, I know back when I was in high school, and I have to look at some, I made some little notes. 
uh, we did we did the standard traditional homecoming for football and senior prom in the spring and uh, on football nights they had pep rallies and uh, uh, the girls would participate in it sometimes they would dress up in football uniforms and put on a little skit before football games and uh, what else did we do well we occasionally we had movies set up the projector and have movies for the kids in school that wanted to see it, we'd set, them up, set it up or they'd set it up in the gymnasium and we'd have movies, watch some movies. Had dress up for Halloween day, you know, for Halloween time. We were permitted to wear whatever costumes, kind of dress up for Halloween, it's kind of a little break. And uh, I remember one thing that we did, I don't know if they do it now because back in the 50s, Buckeye was really rural and we had what we called tractor day. So the guys that lived on farms and worked on farms, they drove their tractor to school. They'd pick a day in the fall and drive their tractor to school. And we'd have as many as, I think, 25 or 30 tractors. There were, oh, there were more farms in this area at that time and they'd all drive them to school and that was kind of fun. They could play football, basketball, baseball, and track. And intramural, we had wrestling and volleyball. A lot of those were not established sports. And uh, the girls didn't have any sports teams. Uh, there were no sports teams available for the girls. It was all intramural. And uh, that didn't change until Title IX came into effect and uh, the girls got to participate in organized sports. But uh, for the boys, uh, they had what they called High Y, and that was a club that was affiliated with the YMCA. And they had the FFA, which was the Future Farmers of America. And for the girls, they had the FHA, which was called Future Homemakers, and I don't know if they do that anymore. And they had a, a club they called Y Teens, and that was uh, affiliated with the uh, YWCA. And then for both, both it was both the boys and girls, they had the band and the vocal groups and the yearbook uh, staff and the school newspaper, student council, uh, National Honor Society, the thespian group and the drama club, the FTA, the Future Teachers of America, and of course they had the chess club. Back then we had, uh, we took a senior trip, usually went to Washington, D.C. and New York City. Uh, there were no girl sports, and uh, the only boy sports were football, uh, basketball, and I believe baseball. We played our football games up at Brunswick High School, which was on Route 42 because there weren't any lights at the present school. Well, there was National Honor Society, Future Teachers of America, librarians, band, Boys Ensemble, Girls Ensemble, um, General Chorus, Special Chorus, and then for the boys only there was a High Y, which was a, a kind of a group that maintained high school standards of Christian uh, beliefs and their projects and service were services for the community and school. And then the girls had Y Teens, which was a create a more Christian attitude among the girls, and we would meet probably bi-weekly. Back then, it was kind of, we didn't have as many opportunities to mix with groups, and uh, we didn't really get to know the kids from the other schools. Like, the school was pretty even. There were 11 kids that, 11 students that came from Liverpool and 18 at Buckeye, or at York. And, Everybody kind of stayed in their own little groups. I think some of them still wanted the individual schools, and uh, there was some conflict over that. And uh, I think, uh, as in all elections, you don't have 100% of um, getting the levy passed or whatever, but it did pass the first time, which was in November of 1952. Probably they could give me <laughs> more advice than I could give them. But I would say set high standards, particularly morals, and be a good neighbor. 
and enjoy family time. That seems to be an important family time. I started uh, teaching, teaching here when that was the high school at Francis Island Junior High in 1957. And uh, started, was the first vocational agriculture class in Buckeye. There had been one in 1925 in Liverpool, but uh, that only lasted a couple of years. Uh, started the uh, involved in starting the Teachers Association uh, for Buckeye. I was senior class advisor many, many times. I uh, member of the Buckeye Area Ministerial Association, which is, is going on now. Uh, offered adult farmer classes. I was negotiator for the teachers member of the Buckeye Athletic Boosters, uh, member of the Buckeye, early member of the Buckeye Foundation, which is gives maybe money to people that uh, are doing projects, to teachers who are doing projects. Uh, we had an FFA that was active locally and, and, and state and uh, the National FFA Association had a uh, promoted a national winner uh, for dairy projects. Well, started the uh, uh, Hall of Fame uh, meeting, or honorary society. I probably would say. Technology has been the big change for you. We had nothing in the way of, well, we had electric typewriter and the chance to take college courses. Uh, I think there are more people going, getting education after they get out of school, which is good. Uh, I think you have a lot more experiences with uh, a variety of things, You're more worldly, because. Uh, I don't know if you ever go to a basketball game, well you do, go to basketball games and you look and the people, many students, are watching the basketball game or doing something on the telephones rather than watching the game. That's a big change. Adding of girls sports was a big item. Now just because uh, I said get more school in your education doesn't mean you have to go to college. There's lots of other places that you can uh, improve yourself, get a skill that's going to be on the market that you can get good jobs. I, I get a real comfortable feeling when I think of Buckeye, or Buckeye gets mentioned. You know, we had such a good personality of teachers over the years, and uh, and the students, they're just a different, it's a different uh, group of people than many schools I've met in. I was a, a uh, everybody is just pretty forward and, and pleasant and uh, encouraging and uh, uh, work well with each other. Now I know there's, that's not with everybody probably, but it's just an atmosphere that you feel comfortable coming into here. Uh, the, I think doing more than was expected of you, I guess, is one thing that does that. Uh, I didn't have to do those other things. They weren't part of my contract that we talked about. And I think treat everybody with respect. Well, let laughter be part of your life every day. Yeah, it eases lots of uh, tension that uh, you might, may develop. Uh, 
it's this is something you probably I'll tell it anyhow, but develop a firm handshake. Well, I went on to um, attend Ohio State University, and I graduated with a degree in health and physical education. I went to the military academy at West Point, and then served seven years in active duty in the military. Well, one big difference is they didn't have post-secondary classes at that point. And I think the only languages were Spanish and Latin. So, I think one of my favorite things were, were called sock hops, and they had them after every home football game. And it was just kind of neat because it was real casual, nothing formal about it, just something to look forward to during the game. The football players would get cleaned up and then come on in. It's extra nice when we won the game. <laughs> Can you think of anything else? No, I think that's, that's probably it. Dress code is a lot more formal than it is now. Um, you, you couldn't wear shorts. Uh, you had to wear long pants and, and, a, and a collared shirt to class. The girls, we had to wear dresses. So, and I think we even had to, if you knelt down, the, the hem had to touch the floor. So they had to be at least to the middle of your knee to do that. We were allowed to wear stretch pants for cheerleading practice after school. <laughs> I'm sure that's a quite a big difference yeah. between then and now. Yeah. It was it was it was an honor to represent Buckeye in that way. It was a great night. Uh, we've gone to several. We uh, I was class president, so. We served as organizing the, the reunions, and we've been to four or five, the major, the major ones, five, 10, 20 years. We're approaching 50 pretty quickly, or 45, I should say. Um, I think the 40th one, we um, went together with the Buckeye, just the Buckeye reunion at Schaefer Lake. And before that, we had gone together with some Buckeye ones at um, Janet and Craig Hanneberg's. Yes. for a couple of years. <laughs> You're good at advice. You oh. do this. <laughs> well, I, I would just say take advantage of all the opportunities that, that the school offers. And, and it's, sometimes it feels like you're so swamped with schoolwork or whatever that you, that you don't do the other activities. And I think as I look back, there's a lot of things that I would have liked to have participated in, but was so tunnel vision. And, uh, you can take advantage of everything everything school has to offer. That's what I was going to say. Make sure you look at the whole picture, set some long-term goals and some short-term goals, make them realistic. I graduated, I started working at Medina Community Hospital, which was at that time. They had an x-ray school at that time, so I went there for two years between there, Medina Hospital and Akron U, and got a degree, and then I went on to work at Medina Hospital for 35 years. Um, there was a, our earth science and chemistry teacher was Mr. Leggett, and he started a thing called field studies, where for during the summertime for probably, I don't remember if we went for seven to 10 days, but we went out west. So we went to South Dakota, we went to the Badlands, we went to Devil's Tower, went to Mount Rushmore, 
We went to Yellowstone Park, uh, rafted on the Snake River, so it was a lot of fun. I went to all the Friday night football games. My brothers all played football. I was a cheerleader, so that was a part of my life to go to the football games. Um, after the football games, we usually went to Rustic Inn, was the popular place to go back then. Well, styles have kind of come back <laughs> again. We wore bell bottoms and hip huggers and platform shoes, that type of thing. Mini skirts, maxis, both, you know, long. So pretty much come full circle. Well, I know you've changed the alma mater just a little bit. Same words, just it's sung a little differently. I don't know how often if you guys, do you know your alma mater? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good, okay, there we know the alma mater. And then my husband's input on this was that he wishes we had the pep band at all the basketball games because he played basketball and he loved the pep band. Um, similar to what you have now, but we, uh, home ec and those kind of things were still taught. So they had a, a homemakers club. They had a, an AVA club, kind of what you guys are doing a little bit, but it was more that the boys took the projectors around to the room. Um, GAA, which was kind of a girls athletic. We didn't have girls sports until I was a sophomore in high school. That was the first year. So that would have been 1972 was the first year for girls sports. So. I graduated from Buckeye in the spring of 1981, and from there I, I worked for the first year with the anticipation of saving money to go to college. And I did go to college for a year after I worked for a year, and uh, as you will soon find out, college is very expensive. So I joined the military afterwards, and I joined the Army and, and uh, went there for two years, and I was a military policeman in the Army. And I was, uh, it was a, I went to an airborne, airborne school too, so I jumped out of airplanes. I figured I was young, I might as well just do things that young people do. And then from there, I got, when I got out of the military, I, I joined the National Guard here, the Ohio National Guard, which paid my tuition. And then I was also given mil you know, money from the military to, to go to school. And I graduated from Malone, Malone University in Canton. And from there, I, like a young person, you, you know, you think you want to do something, you get a degree, you kind of kick around a little bit and you jump from job to job and, uh, and as of now I'm a case manager slash social worker in Cuyahoga County. I work for the Board of Developmental Dis Disabilities and I, uh, I work with adults with, with disabilities and mental retardation. Married, three kids, one of my sons is a teacher here at the middle school and he's the junior varsity basketball coach and he's on the football coaching staff also. Fashion trends. All these words made, you might even know what they mean, but I'll, I'll it was, uh, well acid wash jeans were in. Uh, for guys it was parachute pants. Uh, Sometimes wearing two of the, you know, the collared shirts, the IZOD shirts, you'd wear two of them and flip the collars up so the collar was different on the inside, so you'd wear two shirts for some reason. Uh, very tight jeans with white high top tennis shoes. Some of the stuff I see actually came back a little bit. I'm, I'm not surprised. Some of it you laughed at, but it, it's still around. But uh, and girls was the, was the, I think the girls I remember was big hair. Um, kind of that, you know, the oversized sweatshirts, that Madonna look. I don't know if you know that Madonna look from the 80s, but that was a big, that was a thing. And uh, fashion-wise, yeah, that's, as I look back at pictures, there was a lot of embarrassing ones, but those are the ones that stick out in my mind. I think the more, most embarrassing for the guys and girls was you took an old pair of jeans and you would, you would, you'd cut them short, even as a guy, where your pockets would hang out the bottom of the shorts. 
and guys did that too. And I'll, I'll say I did, I did, I'll admit that I did do that for a little bit of time. <laughs> You know, I never gave it a lot of thought. It was it was generally the you know, it was very much a popularity contest and it, it, it back in these days, you're talking thirty five years ago, it was usually somewhat it was a, a cheerleader and a and the you know a cheerleader and a and a athlete was all, were always the homecoming king. So I I don't think the the schools are any worse off now for not having them, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's overly important. I did go. Uh, uh, the, it was a little different time because you know, graduated in '81. When when you came and back to your class reunion five years later, the chances very well you didn't speak to a lot of those people because there was we didn't have cell phones and we had no way of really communicating. There was no sharing of information. So when you saw people, you haven't truly haven't seen them for about five years. Where as the, as they've gotten as the, um, you know the technology now, I I think they're becoming less and less of a a thing to do because people keep in touch all the time now. So you really don't you don't miss somebody or wonder what they're doing because everybody puts it all out all out there. You know what they're doing. So, um, but I did find that they were it, when I went to the first few they were interesting because uh, some of the people you thought were going to do something didn't and some that didn't did. So it, you know the first the first one I think people didn't change much. But when you got to like the tenth and twentieth year reunion that people changed quite a bit and a lot of surprises. Advice. Uh, hard work will always outlast talent. So if you work hard and you keep grinding it out every single day, it, the talent goes away. But hard, if you're a hard worker, that never, that never fails you. You can never go wrong by working hard. After I graduated from Buckeye in 1996, I went to Baldwin Wallace College. Um, and I majored in education and I graduated from Baldwin Wallace in 2000 and went into an education career um, and that's what I still do today. Currently I work here at Buckeye as the gifted coordinator for the district. Oh my gosh, the classes that you guys have an opportunity to pursue are so much more than than what they had. I, I admire all of the technology that you guys have, and um, you know the opportunity to take college coursework. The only way that we could is if we physically drove to the University of Akron or drove to a university, and you have college coursework offered here on campus, which is great. Um, so so many more electives that you guys have that um, we did not we did not have available, so that's a, a wonderful addition. I gotta say, I went to your homecoming uh, pep rally, and uh, I would say that our pep rallies were much more intense, intense than yours. We had a lot of class battles, um, and we would have several pep rallies throughout the year, and so um, we would have these sashes that had the different class names, and that would get to go on top of this buck, and it was really for bragging rights. So I would say, um, just recently experiencing your homecoming pep rally, I was like, what happened to the class competitions? So um, maybe that's one that I would love to see come back. We had a lot of fun with yeah, that. that one seems like fun. Oh gosh, um, you know, I, I don't remember there being anything too um, crazy. Uh, I remember basically uh, when I was in school, you girls would wear jeans every day, um, sweatshirts. I mean, I was in sports and so I would wear a lot of times, like if it was game day, you wore your warm up. Um, so there was no rules about you can't wear sweatpants or you can wear sweatpants or anything like that. And I know um, in some districts that's like not allowed. You can't wear sweatpants to school. So um, I don't remember any crazy dress code rules. Oh, that was um, quite an honor. I mean, you're voted on by your peers. Um, it, was, it was exciting. It was great. And, um, you know, the previous queen giving you your crown. And, um, 
you know, we used to do the grand march after the football game and anybody could participate. The gym and the homecoming court would be announced and everybody would be dressed up um, with, you know, um, their dates and you would march around the gym and it was a presentation for all different um, grade levels. So not just the senior homecoming court, but anybody in the high school could participate in that and be a part of the homecoming uh, festivities. <laughs> and you can see, um, not real, right? Um, but uh, this was this was the crown that they uh, gave me uh, homecoming night. And then, of course, the um, football team gives you, I, well, at least they used to. I don't know if they still do, but they would give you the... Um, the game ball and I can tell you that all of the seniors, the senior guys uh, signed on this one area and then all of the rest of the team members from the um, varsity football team had signed their names as well as the coaches. <gasps> no, no, no heavens no. Um, you know, it's interesting, I don't think you guys do that anymore, do you? No. Take it all in, enjoy, enjoy your time here and understand um, that everybody has really wanted you to succeed. You know, all of your teachers want nothing more than for you to pursue your dreams and be successful and um, you know, you're going to miss this place. You, I, I haven't left this place really, um, I've lived in Buckeye my whole life. but. Um, Buckeye, you get attached to Buckeye, and as much as you want to leave Buckeye, you will still have this, this urge to return, I guarantee it, so. But some really cool things that I wanted to share is the fact that my family has quite a, a history here at Buckeye. Um, both my grandparents, my grandpa, uh, Ringstmeyer, graduated from Liverpool, Liverpool High School down in Valley City, which is where I attended elementary school. So there he is right there. So he graduated in uh, 1931. Um, and back then, Buckeye, as we know it, didn't exist. It was um, Liverpool High School, York High School, um, and Litchfield. So um, you, you graduated from your community school. So this was his entire senior class um, in 1931. Um, so that's that and then my grandmother um, who married uh, my grandfather there um, she was class of 1938 at York High School so there she is right there uh, Ruth Brittnell um, and so uh, both both my grandparents graduated we would say from Buckeye and then both of my parents attended Buckeye and they met in high school uh, and, and got married um, and they graduated in 1969 and then all three of my sisters we all graduated from Buckeye so class of 93 I'm 96 and uh, my other sister is 97 and and my daughter currently goes to Buckeye so the legacy continues of being a buck so there you go um, let's see oh I did bring two I thought this was really cool this is my grandfather's um, final report card uh, from his senior year, and um, obviously it's it's old and <laughs> it's falling apart. But um, this is his re final report card, as well as his actual diploma. So that is his diploma from 1931. I do have. I do have some uh, pictures. I couldn't find um, my high school sports pictures. I think my mom still has those, but I thought you guys would get a kick out of what uniforms looked like, um, especially you two wearing volleyball stuff. This was in seventh, seventh grade volleyball. Um, these were our uniforms. So you had to wear long sleeves. Um, which, as you know, volleyball season is, you know, usually starting in the summer. So you wore long sleeves and you can see those shorts, right? So <laughs> that's that. And then this would have been, this might have been, 
this is high school. This would have been uh, basketball in high school. But we have no coach in the picture. But again, looking at those uniforms, how it has changed um, what we wear. You know, that's something interesting, too. I know the one question was, you know, what were the fashion trends? And I, I laugh because when I was in high school, nothing was tight. You would wear baggy everything. Like you, you would wear t-shirts that were ginormous um, and um, you would always um, not want to wear something that was actually the size that you would typically wear. It was always extremely large. So like all of my sports um, clothing are all extra larges, which like I don't wear an extra large these days, but th those, <laughs> those sizes are just the way it was. Um, and we would peg our jeans. Do you know what pegging your jeans are? Roll them up. Yeah, well, yeah, you would fold them first and then you would fold them up. Um, so very preppy, very preppy. And um, um, penny loafers, you would have penny loafers, that's what you would wear. So uh, I went to Baldwin Wallace University, or well, it was college then and then became university. Uh, I did a semester internship at Walt Disney World. Uh, I did a semester of school in Australia. Um, I built a concession business. Uh, I built ice skating rinks for seven years between the United States, Canada, South Central America. Um, bought a Dippin' Dot franchise, built that up into a big business. Um, got married. But built a dip and dot retail business and uh, just had twin girls. Soccer, cross country, football, wrestling, track, 4-H, junior fair, junior leaders, choir, uh, church usher, church mentor, um, Honor Society, Student Council, uh, SAD, and probably another three or four other things. Well, I think, um, I, you know, my, my, my parents were working people, both of them worked, so it wasn't convenient for me to be at home. So if I pretended to try to be sick or, or just didn't want to go, my mother would grab me and push me and put me on the bus and I had to go to school and I guess at some point I stopped fighting her and just just went to school um, I probably went a long time without even knowing that I was not missing school and had perfect attendance uh, I think I think at some point when I realized then it became a goal to to never miss a day of school and I guess I wanted to be um, I wanted to be weird you know anybody can miss a day of school how many people can go every day I I guess I wasn't worried about being cool and hanging out with everybody in senior skip day or something like that. Someone that uh, is self-confident in themselves and self-reliant uh, helps to make a well-rounded student. Um, let's say you want to do Glee Club. You think that might be interesting and so maybe you go to see what that's about and then maybe one of your friends says ah oh, that's stupid you know and so then you don't go because your friend thought it was stupid um, then you miss that opportunity to to try something new and meet different people so somebody somebody well-rounded somebody that has the confidence to to go ahead and do what they're interested in instead of what the group's interested in go to atlas your desktop computer, your radio, um, your journal, your calendar, your your everything was separate. Now you can hold all that stuff in your hand, one hand. Go get a job right now. Go get a job right now. Learn um, learn how to how to do something that maybe you don't want to do. Uh, try, try, try again. Uh, set goals. Uh, achieve those goals and then the ones you don't achieve, 
figure out a different way. Uh, get off of get off of Facebook and social media. It's garbage. Well, my favorite teacher has to be Miss Goodwin, of course. You know, she is a great lady, except for the fact that she made me do a flash mob in front of the junior high. I was the first person to run out, but it's okay. basketball, track, and I uh, was in freshman minor and huddle. Say football or track was my favorite. Oh, I definitely consider raising my family in the Buckeye community. Can't really uh, imagine myself or my family anyplace else. I think uh, it would be even better if it stayed the same how it was when I went to school here. But I guess everything changes over time. The advice I would give to the class of 2018 would have to be Hulk Hogan's Four Commandments, of course. Train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, be true to yourself, your country, and be a real American. Shake that.